I want to move uh, very quickly to a matter of very significant uh, interest, I think, to all of us. And it is the cover of Newsweek magazine. We're going to be talking to Joe Dallas in just a few moments. But the cover of this week's Newsweek is singularly devoted to an image of the Bible. That's what you see, a black Bible on a stark white cover with a multi-covered ribbon coming out of it. So again, the cover of Newsweek is devoted to this image of the Bible. The content is designed to undermine the Bible. Here's what John Meacham writes in from the editor's desk. No matter what one thinks about gay rights, for or against or somewhere in between, this conservative resort to biblical authority is the worst kind of fundamentalism. Given the history of the making of the scriptures and the millennia of critical attention scholars and others have given to the stories and injunctions that come to us in the Hebrew Bible and the Christian New Testament, to argue that something is so because it is in the Bible is more than intellectually bankrupt. It is unserious and unworthy of the great Judeo-Christian tradition. Close quote. That's, again, John Meacham in From the Editor's Desk. And then Meacham goes on to argue that sexual orientation is not a choice, but intrinsic to a person's makeup. That biblical passages that condemn homosexuality with equal veracity forbid particular haircuts. And that Christians use the Bible to justify and perpetuate slavery. Religion editor of Newsweek, Lisa Miller, is equally dogmatic. Says Miller, the Bible endorses slavery and provides conceptual shelter for anti-Semites. Of course, in truth, the Bible roundly denounces slavery as sin. The New Testament goes as far as to put slave traders in the same category as murderers, adulterers, perverts, and liars. While the Bible as a whole recognizes the reality of slavery, it never promotes the practice of slavery. In fact, and I've said this many times on the broadcast, it was the application of biblical principles that ultimately led to the overthrow of slavery, not only in ancient Israel, but in the United States of America as well. And Israel's liberation from slavery in Egypt was a model for the liberation of slaves in general. In America, many are today waking up to the liberating biblical truth that all people are created by God, with innate equality. Well, Lisa Miller's assertion that the Bible provides conceptual shelter for anti-Semites is is just as outrageous, as is obvious to any unbiased person, from a scholar to a schoolchild. The New Testament is anything but anti-Semitic. Jesus and the Twelve Apostles, the Apostle Paul, they were all Jewish, In fact, Christians proudly refer to their heritage as the Judeo-Christian tradition. In the book of Hebrews, Christians are reminded of Jews from, from David to Daniel, who are members of the Hall of Fame of Faith. In fact, Christian children grow up with Jews as their heroes, From their mother's knees to to Sunday school classes, they're treated to Old Testament stories of great Jewish men and women of faith, from Moses to Mary, from Ezekiel to Esther. The Bible goes to great lengths to underscore the fact that when it comes to faith, there is no distinction between Jew and Gentile, and that Jewish people throughout the generations are no more responsible for Christ's death than anyone else. Miller and Meacham. I think, owe the world an apology for perpetuating an idiosyncratic brand of fundamentalism that foments bigotry and hatred by entertaining the absurd notion that the Bible provides conceptual shelter for anti-Semitism. About time we put 
the record straight. It's about time that we learned that truth is under siege. And because it's under siege, we have to equip an army of people with supplies so that they can answer these kinds of outrages. Now, Joe Dallas is a guy that's been on the broadcast many times. He runs a pastoral counseling ministry in Tustin, California. He's a much sought-after public speaker. He's a prolific author. He's a contributing writer to the Christian Research Journal. He's written a lot of great books, which we carry right here at the Christian Research Institute, including The Gay Gospel, How Pro-Gay Advocates Misread the Bible, uh, also by Joe, Desires in Conflict and When Homosexuality Hits Home. In fact, he wrote a book called The Game Plan, the men's 30-day strategy for attaining sexual integrity. He is, in my estimation, the foremost authority on this subject. I wanted to bring him on uh, to talk about the cover uh, story in this week's Newsweek. Hi, Joe. How are you doing, Hank? Well, I, I'm really concerned, Joe, about this uh, this article. I know that there's been an outrage, but I'm not so sure that Christians are equipped to answer the kinds of assertions, dogmatic assertions, if you will, uh, made by... Um, Lisa Miller and by 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 John Mitchum, and, and, and therein lies the problem. We need to have answers to these kinds of assertions that are being made to undermine Scripture. I mean, it is an agenda on the one hand, but at its base is an insidious attempt to undermine the Bible. The gloves really did come off this time, Hank. None of us will be too terribly surprised to read uh, a secular publication that takes a liberal slant on homosexuality. But this really was, as you said, much more uh, than a critique of the traditional Christian viewpoint. This was a broadside against the concept of taking the Bible as being authoritative. And that, I think, should be the primary concern we have about this article. The editor of Newsweek said plainly that to take the Bible literally as an authority for life and conduct is the worst kind of fundamentalism. Now, we are still freshly out of September 11th, 2001 uh, in our thinking. We've seen the worst kind of fundamentalism. And to compare a serious regard for Scripture to that kind of atrocity should be a major concern to every believer because it seems that the real issue is going to be is the Bible authoritative or is it not? And that, I think, is where we have to begin the debate and then work our way down to what the Bible does or does not say about sexual ethics. Let's talk about some of the assertions. And and again, I think this is fundamentalism on the the left because you have dogmatic assertions without defensible arguments. Meacham Mm -hmm. says that sexual orientation is not a choice, a matter of behavior, but is as intrinsic to a person's makeup as skin color. And then Lisa Miller says to deny access to any sacrament based on sexuality is exactly the same thing as denying it based on skin color. And, and, and I think, and I was talking to some of our staff today, that this is about as racially insensitive as it gets. How can anyone seriously argue that sexual orientation is an identity? And what evidence is there for that kind of assertion? Must we, in concert now with Meacham's fundamentalist mindset, suppose that an orientation towards pedophilia or serial adultery or, or drug addiction, for that matter, is as basic to a person's makeup as skin color? <laughs> you know, Hank, I live in California, where we, uh, as you know, recently passed Proposition 8 to uh, uphold the traditional definition of marriage as being between a man and a woman. And a high percentage of African-American Californians, even those who voted more liberally on other